Hello, my name is Del Ballou, and I'm going to be working today on some of my old and forgotten and rejected paintings that for one reason or another I have put in the garage stacked away. Um, but I've pulled this one out today and a couple of things I want to say about this painting before I get started. I originally had left a white space here to put two people, um, a man and a woman, and I just left it blank. And so the other night I decided to do a little work on those, but I didn't like the way they looked. They just were out of place. But in covering them up, I've left a little bit of a ghost image here. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to leave that because um, these mountains have, I'm sure, a lot of wandering um, alien spirits going on here and of people who maybe spent their honeymoon in the mountains. And, and this, I think, is kind of interesting. So for those of you who know me um, and can contact me, let me know what you think about that ghost image there. But in the meantime, I'm going to be working on this painting all over. I'm fairly satisfied with the trees. Um, I do need to work on the, the trunks a good bit. And originally, I had stopped the painting right here because I, I frankly just got to the point where I was tired of working on the painting for a variety of reasons. But I'm going to be filling in the space from here over with some of my background rocks and trees because as it is, this forces the, the eye to stop uncomfortably on that edge and you know draws everything over to that side. And ideally, I want the eye to be able to travel all around the painting and not just fall off into oblivion. So I have a lot of white space showing here um, around the, the rocks. I'm going to um, reapply the paint to these rocks today and um, diminish them somewhat so that I can emphasize the rocks in the front, which I have already apparently used the palette knife in the past. And I may apply some paint with the palette knife on here, but obviously the painting is not finished and needs some work. So that's where I'm going. But one thing I've done ahead of time is to um, mix up various shades of gray. And there are many ways to make gray. In this instance, I have Payne's gray just um, lightened with the white paint. And that's not always the best way. I always felt like it was kind of cheating. But with, um, with this one, I have used Prussian blue and alizarin crimson. And then I added some cobalt blue here and mixed it in somewhat to just give a slightly different shade. And of course, um, this one is interesting because I used the Viridian green, which has a kind of blue base. So it made a nice gray. And this is my initial mixing, but I will be dipping into different shades of um, blue and reds as I go along, depending on what I like as I'm painting. And down here, I've put out a little glob of liquid, which is the medium I'll be using. And so let's just take off and see where this leads us. Okay, I'm somewhat going to be looking for and looking at the places I already have um, some of this shade of gray. And this may be a little too light to satisfy me, but I'll just bring it on over here. And rocks, as you probably know already, are pretty much irregular shapes. 
And so whatever shape I make them is okay. Doesn't really matter whether it looks that way in reality or not. And as I say very often, this is my painting and my rocks can be whatever color I want them to be. And you notice I added some blue in here because that was a, just a little too red to suit me. But I'm going to come down here and put some of that color on this rock and maybe down a little in here to give a little bit more of an impressionistic look to these rocks. And I don't necessarily want them to stand out as much as the ones in the front. Although all of the rocks in this particular area are significant. They pretty much hold their own. Okay, I added a little bit of the cadmium red light to my Payne's gray. I'm also trying to pay attention to these edges so that I will cover up all that raw canvas. And this is a very good reason why you should probably stain your canvas before you paint. And if you'll notice, I'm kind of working all around my canvas. Um, kind of spreading some of the color around. And that's for harmony. Each color has a different effect on the eye. And our eyes are pretty intelligent. So we have to feed that intelligence with our own sense of where we want our eyes to go. And it's an interesting point, too, about the eye and what color does to the eye. If you're working with um, pleasing, pleasing colors, I think that stimulates the brain in a very positive way. Perhaps coming directly from what the eye is seeing. So there's a great connection between your eye and your brain. You don't believe me, watch a horror movie and see what happens to your brain and your ability to go to sleep. When I see something unpleasant on TV and in movies, I sort of automatically think about them over and over again. That image stays in my mind. And it comes through my eye gate. So make sure your eyes are fed plenty of pleasant things. That's the beauty of art. I think I have probably always wanted to be an artist. I remember in my art classes in middle school, I didn't necessarily think what I was producing was wonderful, but on a couple of occasions, based on the uh, comments from my teachers, 
I thought, well, gee, this is better than I thought. But I didn't actually do anything about painting until after I came to a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus. Um, I began to see life in a totally different way. And in the process, um, everything was changing in my life. When I say everything, I really mean everything. Okay, notice I'm going to the dark areas here. And even though dark shadows are cool, um, I like to give them a little bit different tone. And for the most part, they're all cool tones. But back to my, um, my sort of life-changing renaissance. Um, I was in Kmart one day, and I saw a paint set, oil painting set. And it just struck me as being the thing I ought to do. So I bought it, the kit and a couple of canvas boards and I brought them home and I had never had a painting lesson in my life and so I was excited the next day when I had some more time to be able to actually do some painting. Well when my um, then husband uh, came home. He said, what are you going to do with that? I said, well, I'm going to paint. And he said, oh, you can't paint. I said, well, we'll see. So the next day I painted a little, it was actually a plastic fruit arrangement that I had on my kitchen table. I painted it. Looking back at it now, it was really quite, uh, the colors were bright because I knew nothing about mixing color. But when um, my husband came home, he said, well, maybe you can paint. If you can paint, then paint that. And he pointed to a painting that we had purchased from his boss's wife. And it was a beach scene with sky and beaches and sea oats. So I said, okay, I'll take that challenge. So the next day, I did just that. I painted that beach scene. So um, when my husband came home from work, he said, you know, you, you just might be able to paint. Why don't you go and sign up for lessons? So I did. I took one class and I painted like a fiend after that. I don't even know how many paintings I did, but I, they were numerous. And I've recently found pictures of them, photographs of them, which are poor photographs, sadly enough. But now I can't even remember what I did with all those paintings. Um, who knows where they got off to. Hopefully I didn't throw them away. But I have always felt that um, that my art talent was a gift in every sense of the word and that my obedience to follow Christ uh, was rewarded I think it's quite natural 
to be created because the the creator himself lives in us and so why wouldn't we be able to do creative things and, and wonderful things with our hands and with our imaginations okay I'm going to lighten this just a little bit up here this is pretty much in shadow but um, these rocks I assume are still gray to a great extent Now, at the time of day that this painting is taking place, um, it's pretty much uh, with the sun, if not overhead, at least uh, shining pretty brightly on certain parts of these rocks. The trees overhead shade them considerably, but there are a few that needs to be pretty light, which I've already pretty much represented here previously. This rock here, this large rock, of course by its very size is not going to be moving from year to year nor do most of these others um, this this river this stream um, only changes insofar as the amount of water that's rushing over these rocks and I find I find those those aspects of these rocks amazing that they don't change much. My favorite scene for rocks is on the road on the way to Cades Cove because there are some rocks in those streams that have been have been sculpted by the water rushing over them over the probably hundreds if not thousands of years and they've created things that look to me a little bit like Henry Moore sculptures, uh, which I really love. Uh, Henry Moore is probably my favorite sculptor. I'm dry brushing over that just a little bit to give it a little bit more texture while toning it down a little bit at the same time if you're one of those um, viewers of YouTube and that would include me as well I really encourage you to, um, if you're not picking up your paintbrush, I encourage you to do that so you're not just a passive observer. So watching painting videos is a little bit like watching exercise while you're sitting on your couch. It may look like fun and it may be even entertaining for a little while, but you're not going to get any results until you get up off that sofa or find yourself some paint and some paint brushes. It really is and can be a life changing experience and art is, you know, I just can't say enough about it. I wrote a book about my experiences not only with my own personal art but in teaching teaching painting 
and I'm an English professor, so um, I also teach some um, creative writing. But all of it, I think, has the same satisfying result. You're, you're giving your imagination a place. A place to grow, to, uh, to spill out. And that's another one of the joys of teaching, is that I get to share my love for things while leaving people into those areas that I know are going to be meaningful in their lives. So I'm going to going to end this video for now so it won't take so long to upload to YouTube and I do appreciate your taking the time to watch and I have a website which is www.delbaloo.com and delbaloo2.com. That's the second website I'm working on. And my name is spelled D E L L B E L E W. And that's delbaloo.com. And um, please let me know what you think about my videos. And it's really nice chatting with you today. So goodbye for now.